Hi, I'm Nancy with On Points Tutorials, Tips, and Tours. We finished our quilt top. Now it's time to start machine quilting it. Now I'm going to show you some of the tools that I use when I'm machine quilting, but you got to know there is so many more out there on the market. Every time I turn around, somebody is promoting some tool that is going to make free motion quilting that much easier. This is going to be the basics. Later, I'll take you through the steps of quilting. But for now, these are, the, these are the pieces of equipment that I think you need to get started. To start with, you're going to be sitting. You need a chair. You need a chair that will swivel and that will roll and that will also adjust up and down. This chair I think I got for like 25 bucks. Love this chair. I couldn't believe the difference when I just got this chair and the support that it um, gave me. The next thing is a pedal holder, so a pedal stay. This is a piece of wood with though, that sticky stuff that goes in a, a cabinet so that your dishes don't um, break and get shipped around. And this is where your pedal goes, and it's going to keep it from sliding on the floor. When you sit down to start quilting, if you don't have this, your pedal seems to want to run away from you. So get yourself something like this pedal stay to keep your pedal in place. Next is going to be the feet. Now the feet are very important. Now this foot is the walking foot. Every machine has its own walking foot. Now there's some generic machines that can share feet, but many of the machines today have to be specific to their brand of machine. So this is a walking foot. This alarm is going to go up and down and it's going to make these teeth actually work at the same time with the bottom feed dogs so that when you're feeding your quilt through, it will grab it at the top and bottom and bring the quilt forward. If you don't use a walking foot, when you're doing your straight line quilting, the top layer will start to walk forward on you. So that's why you need to have a walking foot. The second foot is what is traditionally called a darning foot. But nowadays people don't darn their clothes, but you use the same foot for free motion quilting. So this is going to be a spring foot and you can see it'll spring up and down. And that's what's going to make it possible for you to free motion quilt on your quilt. There are some high-end machines that are also embroidery machines that might have a floating foot. So that's a third option when it comes to the feet used for, for um, machine quilting. Then we have the needles. There are so many different needles on the market. I'm going to tell you what my favorite needle is and why. This is the top stitch needle. Now a top stitch needle is going to have a, the front shaft where the thread actually glides in the needle. It's going to be a little bit deeper, so that is going to protect the thread, so you're going to have less thread breakage. Also, the hole on the needle is elongated. It's not a circle. It's not too big. It's not too small. Something about it makes it just right. It also is going to be a very sharp needle. So a universal needle, which is the least expensive needle on the market, a lot of people want a machine quilt with that. That needle is not a sharp point. So it's not going to give you the clean machine quilting you want. A top stitch needle in size 80 or 90, I think is the perfect needle for any thread. Now we're coming to our extension table. Every extension table, again, is going to be unique to the sewing machine that you're using. This one fits on the machine that I use here at the, on the show. This is going to make the concept, the practice, everything about free motion quilting so much easier. I will take you through step by step on a couple of different ways to have an extension table, but know that you're going to need some sort of an extension table. This is called silicone spray. This has come out a few years ago. They used to use it on the industrial side of sewing for a long time. The idea of if you are, my friend Mary actually used to work at GM and she used to make the seat covers. Well, that's a lot of heavy upholstery fabric or leather. Well, she realized if she used the spray silicone on the surface uh, that her fabric was moving on, her fabric moves so much faster. So she introduced me to the silicone spray. With the silicone spray, you're going to spray on the surface of your sewing, your extension table, or if you happen to have a, um, a table that your machine sinks down inside of, you can also spray this on top of that. Sometimes I'll actually spray the 
fabric. So if I'm getting grip and it's just not moving as freely as I want it to, I'll actually flip the quilt over and spray the backing fabric. It'll make it slide better. You can actually, if you have your needle is gumming up if you're working on some uh, like fusible webbings. Your needle can get gummy if you take a little bit of silicone spray, put it on your fingers and run it up and down on the needle. It'll keep that from getting all goopy. So silicone spray has a lot of different uses. Then we come to the gloves. Now this is a pair of quilting gloves. This is called the Machinger gloves. Now what I like so much about these is that they're not too big. Sometimes you'll find gloves that'll be a heavier cotton and they'll have little rubber dots on the bottoms of them. They're gonna work, but they're so clumsy. You can't actually undo a, a safety pin or move a needle or grab a pair of scissors. When they came out with this kind, I really liked it that they actually fit really nice. And then the fingertips in the particular have a little bit of a non-slip surface to them. Then is lickety grip. I used to use the gloves all the time until I really truly fell in love with Lickety Grip. I will only use the gloves now if I'm doing a very large quilt. Most of the time I use Lickety Grip. The idea of Lickety Grip is the same thing that secretaries used to use when back when they used to have paper in offices. Now everything is paperless. But they would use this so that they could flip through the paper. That's all it is. And it's just going to go on your hands. You're going to rub it into it rub it onto the surface of your hands, and it makes your hands feel a little bit like a post-it note. So it's not real sticky, and it will last maybe five, 10 minutes. And truth, five or 10 minutes into your machine quilting, you need to take a break anyhow. You can't just continually free motion quilt for an hour. So this also gives me the opportunity to stop, put more lickety grip on my hands, and then I've calmed down a little bit, Machine quilting, you're going to find out, can be a little bit frustrating at times. So this is going to be like my little break maker at the same time. This is a thread stand. Now this particular thread stand is a heavy duty thread stand. On the market are a couple of different brands that are made of a plastic. They're very lightweight. They're honestly just not worth your money. They're not going to hold the thread the way it needs to be held. This particular thread stand has a heavy metal base so it is not going to tip over it is going to really work well i'd highly recommend when you get a thread stand you get the metal base what is what you're going to use that for is your cone threads now you can have threads in smaller spools like this but the most economical way to buy your thread is in a cone i'm going to take you through a little bit later about all the different kinds of threads you can choose from here is just a small small sampling of some of the threads that i own so there's the tools that are going to be the basics to get you through machine quilting thread 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 I am obsessed with thread. This is nothing new to my friends. Many of them have thread envy. I honestly think it's impossible to have too much thread, but might be possible to have too much fabric. Fabric can go out of style, but thread is always gonna be useful. So I wanna show you just a little bit of my thread collection and explain to you what I might use some of these threads for. So we're gonna start with the basics. The basics is a cotton. So this is a 50 weight cotton. The 50 weight cotton is the one that you use for piecing your quilt. It also can be used for quilting the quilt. I love a 50 weight cotton in the bobbin if I'm gonna be quilting in the top with a 50 weight or heavier cotton thread in the top. This is a 12 weight cotton, which is the heaviest cotton that you can actually put through your sewing machine. Using a 90 top stitch needle, you can use this very heavy cotton thread, and when you're quilting with it, you will see what you have quilted. I love using heavyweight threads. When it's, you know, really simple background and I want to add some interest, that's when I'll grab my heavyweight threads to do my quilting. The next one is rayon. Now, 15, 20 years ago, rayon was the thread of choice for embroidery machines and if you wanted to get a little bit of shine on your quilt. So you would use rayon thread. 
it's kind of gone out of vogue. People don't really use it as much anymore, mainly because it's not color fast. So a lot of embroiderers that used to use rayon now have turned to shiny polyesters. The polyesters they're able to make nowadays are fabulous. They're super shiny. They're great colors. They're really strong. I love using the polyester that's shiny. So this is going to be a polyester that's shiny and variegated. You can't go wrong with the variegated thread. This is going to be a polyester that's a matte. Now I will use a matte polyester if I'm machine quilting with a polyester in the bobbin, but the main thing that I use a matte polyester for is for garment making. I still make garments and that is for sure my thread of choice when I'm working with garments. Then polyester is going to be very, very fine now also. This is a bobbin thread. It's a 60 weight. It's called bottom line, and it's because it's really made for the bobbin. So I'll use that 60 weight bobbin thread in my bobbin and then put these heavier weight polyesters in the top. Love the combination. It really works well. My tension's going to be good. I'm not going to have a lot of thread breaking. The other thing I like about that 60 weight polyester is when you wind your bobbin with it, it will go so much longer than if you wind it with a heavier thread because you can put more thread in the bobbin. Speaking of bobbins, there's also pre-wound bobbins. Here is just a few of my pre-wound bobbins. The pre-wound bobbins might work in your sewing machine. You have to try it out. It's not going to work in all the sewing machines. In my sewing machines, the pre-wound bobbins work great. That's a great time saver. I don't have to take the time to actually wind my bobbin anymore. I just grab another pre-wound bobbin. The last one is going to be the invisible thread. I'll go a little bit more in depth with invisible thread later in lessons. It's a great thing because it's invisible and it's a bad thing because it's invisible. So here is just a small introduction to some of the threads that I love to use. Series of machines so that you can have some idea maybe where you're gonna start and where you're gonna end. This is the Kenmore machine that I got from my parents for Christmas when I was 14 years old. Not telling any tales, but that makes this machine 40 years old. And this machine is fabulous. Telling you if I want to do the best buttonhole ever, this is the machine I come back to every time. But what it can also do is machine quilt. The first probably four or five queen size quilts I ever quilted, free motion and walking foot, was on this Kenmore machine. Now, I've learned a lot since then. I've also learned the idea about finding the tool to make the job easier. So that's what I'm gonna show you with the other machines. But I wanna show you that with this 40 year old Kenmore, I didn't have an extension table back then. So I just used a stack of coffee table books, books that were heavy enough not to move around too much, but that had a shiny top so that the fabric would slip on it a little bit. I've put my spring foot in, this is the darning foot. And I'm going to show you that I can free motion quilt on this machine. I can do any of the designs that I need to do. The feed dogs are down and I'm just going to free motion quilt. The problem comes in with the space here. I just don't have that much of it. When you work a queen size quilt, a queen size quilt is going to be at 90 inches wide. That means you need to be able to get 45 inches of quilt to the middle. Depending on the thickness of your batting, that can be a little bit tough in a space like this. So we're going to move down to my next machine. This is the machine that we've been doing all of the work on the Learn to Quilt so far. I love this machine. It has every possible bell and whistle that you can get on the modern day machines. It has a needle up and down. It has a needle threader. It has all the stitches. I don't know, there's got to be 200 stitches on this machine. I love this machine. This machine also can do all the free motion quilting I need it to do. It can do all the walking foot, all the straight line um, quilting also, but honestly I don't appreciate it as much as the next machine. When there's all the bells and whistles on a machine, 
It just means that there's something else you got to tweak, something that can go wrong. With this machine, it is so fabulous for piecing and for making garments. I love it. But when it comes to quilting, I'm going to go to this machine. This machine is a very basic, much more industrial machine. It's got one stitch and one stitch only. It does have needle up and down, so the needle will stay down when I want it to. It does have the thread cutter and a needle threader, but it does not have but one stitch. It also has about nine and a half inches of space here. This is the quilt that we've been working on. This is the learning to quilt quilt. This quilt is 70 inches square. I can get all 70 inches of that quilt inside the throat and still have plenty enough room to move around. The truth is, is I never have to get the whole quilt in. I only ever have to get to the middle. So you can see all that space I have. So this type of a machine is gonna be a basic one stitch machine, but it's gonna have that space and its real intent and purpose in life is to machine quilt, which means it's also gonna be a really strong machine. I hope that this review will help you figure out where you are and where you maybe wanna to get to for the quilting that you're gonna do. straight line quilting and free motion quilting. Here I'm going to show you a little bit of the straight line quilting. I'm going to use the straight line quilting to do on the ledge work here on my borders. That's going to help really make the quilt secure. I like to have all of my straight line quilting done first. Sometimes it will be on the ledge, sometimes it will be in the ditch. With this demo, I wanna show you the on the ledge, and I'm using this little block so that you'll be able to see the dark thread color on it. So I've got my walking foot on, my walking foot is attached, and what you wanna notice with the walking foot is as it works, there's these little top teeth that are gonna come up and go down, and that is going to actually move the fabric at the top and the bottom. So your feed dogs underneath are gonna match up with the feed dogs on the top with the walking foot. So that's why it's so important. I honestly don't think that you can do successful straight line quilting without a walking foot on your machine. So I'm gonna take and do this little bit of quilting here. I'm just trying to stay uh, maybe a 16th of an inch on the ledge of that seam. So I'm not between the white and the red, I'm actually on the white. So as I come to the end here, I'll cut my thread. And this is what on the ledge looks like. You can see that it's only this tiniest little bit, but I find that to be the most secure straight line quilting for your quilt. So we've done the straight line quilting sample. Now I want to take you through the free motion. Now this is just a very basic free motion tutorial. Know that there is so much more that I could teach you about free motion. So I want to start by machine, my machine setup. I have my darning foot on or my free motion foot. This is the one that actually rises up and down and it'll spring down onto the base of the quilt. So it holds the quilt in place as the needle goes down and up, and then it lifts so then you can move the quilt. A lot of times people ask me, well, what's your stitch length when you're doing free motion quilting? Nothing, absolutely nothing. My stitch length is at zero. My machine is not gonna tell me how fast or how big my stitches are. It's my hands that are gonna do that work. So I've got my acrylic table here. This is the one that actually came with the machine. So I've got a nice big surface to work on. I've got my table is big enough for my quilt to float around on. I'm gonna use my favorite lickety grip. Just gonna put some on my hands. It's gonna make my hands be sticky so I can actually hold on to my quilt and I'm ready. So when I'm doing this, the first thing I'm gonna do with um, applique if I'm going to do free motion quilting is first I'm going to quilt all around the edges of my applique and I'm going to do that with free motion. What's so cool about free motion is I'm never going to take and turn the quilt. 
the quilt is always going to stay just like this, but I'll be able to go in all the different directions. So here I go. So I'm going to quilt and just stay right on the edge. And I'm going to go at a nice, easy pace that I'm comfortable with, that I'm confident with, that I know that I'm not going to move too fast or too slow. And my stitch length is going to stay generally consistent. There, I've gone all the way around the applique, right on the inside edge, trying to stay as close to the applique as I can. Now I'm gonna take and start to actually meander the background spaces. So I'm gonna start with this little bit here, come between these leaves, and now the fun begins because I'm gonna be able to draw anything that I imagine. I'm gonna do simple loop-de-loos for this particular quilt. And the loop-de-loos are exactly what they sound like. Just meandering across the quilt, getting from one point to the next. And I would continue this for this entire block. I think you get the general idea. When I first started free motion quilting, I seriously thought I was gonna die. It stressed me out to the point of anxiety attack level. And I tell you that because I don't want you to think that when you first start free motion quilting, that that feeling that you're getting is unique to you. Almost everybody that starts free motion quilting is gonna have that feeling. 
You've just got to push through it. The more you do, just like in anything, whether or not it be accounting or farming or art, the more you do, the better you're going to get at it. What I can guarantee you is your second quilt will be better than your first and your third quilt will be better than your second. You just have to keep doing it. Today, free motion quilting is seriously my favorite part of quilt making. It makes the quilting process more fun and creative and so much faster than just straight lines.